and joining me on the news track, international author, actor, speaker and commentator, Kabir Bedi on this controversy around the BBC documentary. Sir, welcome on India Today. Sir, what is your objection to this BBC documentary? You know, um, I am not for bans in general, but I really feel this documentary should be banned for, for the following reasons. One, they have raked up a matter that's 20 years old, that's settled in the Indian courts, put together some inquiry of theirs, headed by Jack Straw, a man totally discredited as a minister, who was a foreign minister in England, who proclaimed that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction and sent hundreds of Englishmen to their death um, by, based on his false assertions and promises. Um, so, this documentary, what does it try to do? It tries basically to discredit the Prime Minister of India, who has been twice elected by a handsome majority of the world's largest democracy. Okay. And they're doing it over an issue that has been long settled in Indian courts, and in a way that is so biased that I just don't believe the BBC could do something like this. So I'm totally opposed to it. Sir, you're accusing the BBC of having a bias. You've also had credibility with the inquiry, with the British inquiry. Why is the credibility of the British probe in question, according to you? Because Jack Straw himself is in doubt. He's the man who lied to the British public, talking about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, sent England along with Tony Blair into the war, killed God knows how many British young men in that war, and discovered no weapons of mass destruction. So he is a discredited witness to start with. Secondly, okay, this is well, an inquiry conducted by some people sent by him to India. Was it a judicial commission? Was there any official standing to this inquiry? Is it more, is it more um, credible than the decisions reached by the Indian courts? Okay. This issue has long been settled by the Indian courts. And, you know, there were two special investigative teams set up by the Supreme Court during Congress tenure to investigate whether Modi was responsible. Both okay. cleared him. And for Jack Straw to stand up and say he believes, and he can say everything he wants. The, are you hearing me? Loud and clear. Go on, sir. Strength fight. Uh, he can say anything he wants. But if he, he, he is given a star rolling in this British documentary, I question the motives of the BBC in making this because it's a publicly funded corporation. And they have every responsibility. They have every responsibility for the public good. This neither serves the public good in England okay. nor the public good in India. Sir, you're questioning the intent of the BBC. You've called BBC's documentary gutter journalism. You've accused them of scavenging for sensationalism. These are very strong words, sir. What prompted this? It is gutter journalism. It is. And I use those words advisedly. I have great respect for the BBC in many respects. But this documentary... I cannot understand how anyone would, would would air it. You know, this documentary was not made by the BBC. It was made by somebody else and sold to the BBC. Why did the BBC buy a documentary like this that rakes up things 20 years old, long settled, you know, attacking the reputation of a prime minister of the largest democracy in the world, eight years after he's been in power, 20 years after an incident they talk about, which has long been settled here, what is the motivation of the BBC? Why do they do things like this? This only stokes more tension between Hindus and Muslims, and therefore I think it should be banned because it's an incitement to violence, in my opinion. It doesn't do any good for relationships between Hindus and Muslims in England either. And therefore I think the British BBC has been extremely irresponsible in buying and airing a documentary of this nature just for sensationalism. That's why I call it gutter journalism. Sir, but is, is, there, is there any evidence that it's been bought and not uh, made by them? Are you saying that the intent of this documentary, of the filmmakers, the intent itself is malafide, uh, aimed to foment communal tension in India? You know, I think the, um, 
there are various institutions in England, including The Guardian, including The Economist, and now perhaps even the BBC, which have always peddled the Congress narrative. If the Congress propaganda cell made this documentary, they could not have made a better documentary in terms of trying to malign the image of Narendra Modi. A lot of people in the West, a lot of intellectuals, even in India, don't like Prime Minister Modi because he's not one of the westernized elite club. And therefore, he's not one of us, as they say. Um, it's true, he's not. He's, he's, he's a man from the heartland of India. He's a man who speaks Hindi with pride. He's a man who, who is, has come to terms on his own terms. Okay. And therefore, um, why the BBC makes a documentary like this is beyond me. And the fact that nobody's been punished or fired for making a documentary like this surprises me. Um, they might, you know, they're very clever because in this documentary, while even saying making all these heinous charges, they keep saying, however, this matter was cleared by the courts, almost to the sideline. However, this matter was adjudged to be different. A throwaway. Those are the main points. From the beginning, the first two minutes of the documentary say, Modi's rule has been marked by religious turmoil in India. Well, there's not been one major communal riot in the last eight years and talk about religious turmoil in India. I find that offensive. That's why I use such strong language against the BBC. They have acted very irresponsibly and somebody should lose their jobs in the interest of fair reporting and journalism and, 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 and uh, belief in the truth of the matter. This is just a hack, hatchet job. A smear, a decision to smear Prime Minister Modi because somebody has a personal agenda against him. I can't think of any other reason. So very strong words coming from you. Of course, um, Congress Party um, senior leader Rahul Gandhi, uh, he's on his Bharat Jodo Yatra and he said, truth has a nasty habit of coming out. I really don't want to dignify Rahul Gandhi's comments. Um, you know, since Rahul has mentioned Rahul Gandhi, let me say, not a single inquiry was conducted of any importance on the Sikh um, massacres that took place in Delhi. Um, the people involved in them were roaming freely. Um, the truth has surfaced about that many times, but it has been largely covered up by the Congress government during the years in power. So let's not get to Rahul Gandhi and the Gandhis and who was responsible for that. Let me just say that as far as this documentary is concerned that the BBC made, uh, it is not the truth. And it is not the truth because the Indian Supreme Courts have said so. Every inquiry has said so. Modi is not personally responsible for those riots. And therefore, for Rahul Gandhi or Jack Straw or any other an uh, anti-Modi person to say this, is their business. Why this is highlighted by the BBC is something that I do not accept and I find offensive. Okay, okay, because some even within the Congress appear to have had reservations about this BBC documentary and as, and as some have argued, the centuries-old British habit of divide and rule. What do you make of former Defence Minister A.K. Antony's son, Anil Antony, uh, submitting his resignation from all Congress party posts, sir? Well, he's right. He's right. I'm not sure it's divide and rule in this case. I think really it's, there's some hidden agenda to bring down the image of Prime Minister Modi in the year when India has the presidency of the G20. I think there's uh, many people that never liked Prime Minister Modi from the day he came to office. Okay. No matter what you tell them of all that he's achieved in India, the schemes is introduced, the benefits is brought to the people, the re-election of the man by a landslide. None of this convinces them. They just don't like Modi because he's not one of them. Well, sorry, it's a different India now. We, are, we have a prime minister that's taking India on a fabulous course uh, in terms of the economic growth of this country. And the one issue that they've had is Godra, Godra, Godra. Well, that's settled. Let's not go there anymore. And then they keep talking about religious persecution in India. And yes, there will be some incidents of, of, of 
hotheads, extremists, um, Hindus who do things, etc. Those are law and order problems. Everything can't be laid at the feet of Narendra Modi and said, you are responsible because that outfit in that state did this to that Muslim. You know, in a country of a billion people, you, th there's going to be incidents of all kinds. Why this is highlighted and made the main agenda of the anti-Modi plank shows the bankruptcy of the opposition reasons. But Kabir Bedi, I mean, you've been watching our broadcast uh, in the past several days. You, you're looking at what's happening, uh, whether it's Jamia Milia Islamia University today or the Jawaharlal Nehru University late last night or even the Hyderabad University. There are protests by a section of the students. What would you tell those protesting students who are now saying it's their democratic right to protest? They're not even being permitted that, sir. You know, there's nothing that I can tell them that will change their minds. They don't like Prime Minister Modi. They will try and unite around every single cause that opposes Modi. And this documentary has given them some kind of cause to unite around saying, oh, freedom of press and how dare you ban something and we will see it even if you ban it. I find okay. that... I don't understand the logic of that. We as Indians should stand together when the country prime minister is being attacked, when the institutions of the country like the Supreme Court and their judgments are being questioned. We should stand together as Indians and say, wait a minute, this is something we've looked at, we've dealt with, get it over. No, no, we want to see that documentary because it's freedom of expression. But I'm sorry, I'm not for bans at all. But when bans incite communal violence, when they upset people that to the degree that they might go and do something dangerous when society and law and order is questioned, then that documentary should be banned. That is the okay. only criteria for banning something if it incites violence. Okay. Okay. Sir, as always, free, frank and fearless, Kabir Bedi for joining me here on India Today. Many thanks.